we are going to do zero product property. Okay, so zero product property states that if you have a b equals zero, then that means that a equals zero and b equals zero. Okay, so we're going to look at an example to like how this would apply to what we're doing with quadratics. So let's say we had zero equals x minus a times x minus b. So those are our factors. Well, since those are multiplied together, then we can say that x minus a equals zero and x minus b equals zero. So I know we're probably wondering, well, why does this matter? Well, um, if we are finding x-intercepts, we use the zero product property to do that. So we're going to go ahead and practice. So we want to find the x-intercepts using zero product property. So remember, you should be taking notes as you follow along. And if I'm going too fast, you could absolutely pause it. Okay, so here's our quadratic. We have y equals x squared plus 7x plus 12. Okay, so we have to remember, well, how do we find x-intercepts again? So remember, when you find an x-intercept, you make y equal 0. So that should be your first step, is to make y equal 0. So 0 equals x squared plus 7x plus 12. All right, so then how do we get it to look like those factors? Well, we should know that you can factor to solve. So we're going to go ahead and factor this quadratic in order to solve it. So this is going back to what we've been doing. So remember to factor, you make your box. And the first term, which is x squared, goes in the first box. The last term, which is 12, goes in the last box. And then you can make your diamond. And 12x squared, because that's the product of the diagonal, goes at the top. You take your middle term, 7x, and that goes at the bottom. We need two numbers that multiply to 12x squared, but add to 7x. And that's going to be 3x and 4x. Okay, so then we go ahead and take those two factors and place them in the diagonals of the boxes, and then we fill in the edges. So we know the greatest common factor of x squared and 3x is x, and then from there it's pretty easy. x times what is x squared? x. x times what is 3x? 3. x times what is 4x? 4. Okay, so typically, after we factored it, we would be done. We would say, all right, we factored it, but remember, we're solving, so this is still equal to zero. Now, using the zero product property, because um, a times b, or a factor times a factor, is equal zero, we could then say that x plus 3 equals zero, and x plus 4 equals zero. And then this is very easy to solve. A linear equation, you just subtract 3, so x equals negative 3, subtract 4 from both sides, so x equals negative 4. And I don't know if you guys remember, but when we would write x-intercepts, um, when we were working with lines, remember we want to write them as an ordered pair, so it should be negative 3 comma 0 and negative 4 comma 0. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add a little extra part here. I want us to find the y-intercept. All right, so we're going to go ahead and find the y-intercept. So remember, the equation is y equals x squared plus 7x plus 12. So when we found the x-intercept, we made y equals 0. So when we find the y-intercept, you are going to make x equals 0 and solve for y. 
Okay, so we will make x equals 0 and solve for y. So this would be y equals 0 squared plus 7 times 0 plus 12. So we get y equals 0 plus 0 plus 12. So y equals 12. So the y-intercept, how we write it as an ordered pair, when x is 0, y is 12. All right, let's go ahead and try one more. So same thing. We have y equals x squared minus 2x minus 8. So if we want to find the x-intercepts, we let y equal 0. So 0 equals x squared minus 2x minus 8. And then we need to solve that. Well, we know that we can solve that by factoring. So we're going to go ahead and make our box. We know that the first term goes in the first box. The last term goes in the last box. You can make your x. You find the product of the diagonal, which would be negative 8x squared. And then we take that middle term and we put that on the bottom. We need two numbers that multiply to negative 8x squared, but add to negative 2x. And those two numbers are negative 4x and 2x because negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, and negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. You take those two factors and place them in the box, and then from there you come up with the edges. So the greatest common factor of x squared and 2x is x. I know x times x is x squared. x times negative 4 is negative 4x. x times 2 is 2x. And I can see that that's right because negative 4 times 2 is that last number, negative 8. So then I take my factors, x minus 4 times x plus 2, and remember this was equal to 0. Well, using the zero product property, because this is equal to 0, then I can set each factor equal to 0. So you should find this pretty easy because you already know how to do all of the above steps that I just did. It's just the last step is you're just solving it. So you set both factors equal to zero and then you solve it. So you should hopefully find this a little bit more um, easier than what we've done in the past. So x equals four and x equals negative two. So then remember when we write them as intercepts, it'd be four comma zero and negative two comma zero. So I'm gonna do what I did last time and add in, find the y-intercept. So remember to find the y-intercept, you let x equal zero. So we would have y equals, and then we know it's x squared minus two x minus eight. So y equals, 0 squared minus 2 times 0 minus 8. So we end up getting y equals 0 minus 0 minus 8. So y equals negative 8. So the y-intercept would be 0 comma negative 8. And I'm going to do one more little challenge here. We want to find the vertex. So this is actually going just back a couple days like what we did on um, Monday and Tuesday. So we know um, from graphing parabolas that whenever we graph the intercepts, the vertex is halfway in between. So I know that the intercepts are 4 and negative 2. So if I average the intercepts, that will give me the x value of the vertex. So just a quick example, so I know that we have the intercepts at 4 and negative 2. So the vertex has to be halfway in between, so we're going to average them. So we have 4 plus negative 2, and then you divide by 2. So that would be 2 divided by 2, which equals 1. So that makes sense that the vertex would be right on that line somewhere. 
Okay, so we know the vertex now is one comma something. Now to get that something, think back to how we graphed. We would plug in points. So I have an X value, I just need a Y value. So I'm gonna plug in that X value into the equation. So one squared minus two times one minus eight. So anywhere I see an X, I'm plugging in a one. So Y equals one minus two minus eight. So one minus two would be negative one and minus eight would be negative nine. So that means that the vertex is one comma negative nine. All right, so that was zero product property, which helps us solve for quadratics and um, find the x-intercepts.